what I couldn't do With plenty of money and you In spite of the worry that money brings Just a little filthy lucre buys a lot of things And I could take you to places that you would like to go But outside of that I've no use for dough It's the root of all evil, of strife and upheaval But I'm certain, honey, that life would be sunny With plenty of money and you Stifling up evil, but I'm certain, honey, that life would be sunny. beat it. It's great money. I don't understand why people don't want to be school crossing guards. You're outside, fresh air, not hard. Just be nice with kids. Be nice with people. Let me get these guys. I'll cross you. How you doing? Good. Are you staying on this side? Oh, you guys work at that red building? Oh, oh you work oh you work at the clock please? Next door of it. In between. Oh what's what kind of work? Little real estate office. Oh real estate? Oh good for you. Alright guys. Have a good one. Oh, nice looking guys, huh? They work real estate there. Yeah, you get to meet a lot of nice people. In this kind of job, you got to be real careful. You don't want nobody getting killed. These cars, that's why insurance is so high around here, because these people, the way they drive, they don't stop. Sometimes I'm walking in the um, walkway, and I have to tell them to move their car back. They're halfway on the walkway. Where are the kids going to walk? Where am I going to walk? I always tell Aunt Regetta, Ricky, I tell her, if they ever hit me, I'm going to put a big dent in their car, and you sue them really good. Hey. How you doing? Ah! Uh, which way are you guys going? All right. Are you happy out of school? Yeah, I don't blame you. Come on, let's go. Well, have a nice weekend. Busy corner, huh? Busy, busy, busy. A lot of cars. Hi. Are you guys going this way? Okay. Have a nice weekend. All right, take care. Well, I was born in 1952 in Lake Forest Hospital, and I'm second in line of five children. Regetta was the oldest, I was second. Donnie was third, Anita was fourth, and Regina was fifth. And uh, Mom and Dad got married in 1949. Ma waited for Dad to get out of the war because he was a prisoner of war from the Batan Death March. He used to speak to the children at the different schools about the war. He was very involved with the American Legion, veterans of foreign wars. He was disabled veterans. He was involved with everything. And then when he passed away in 2008, at the age of 90, we found out there was a place in uh, Wellsburg, West Virginia, that would display all his World War II memorabilia. When mom and dad, grandpa and grandma got married, they lived in Knollwood, but they lived with Aunt Deanna and Uncle Jack when grandpa got out of the service. Boy, they were good looking when they were young. All my aunts, my dad's sisters, they would eat a candy bar once a day and then they'd go dancing all night long. 
They were all skinny, skinny, skinny. Beautiful, beautiful girls, every one of them. Auntie Angelina, Auntie Lena, who was Carolina. Auntie Anna, oh my God, good looking girls. My mom's side too, Auntie Josephine, Auntie B, who was Louise, Uncle Chuck, Uncle Johnny. Oh my God, those were the great days. I miss all my aunts and uncles. Hi, how are you? You gonna cross? Here, go on there and then I'll get you across. Have a nice weekend. Ah, uh, the Define the 50s is uh, the Barbie. I had a $3 Barbie that had the little bathing suit on, black and white, and I wish I would have kept it. I sold it at a garage sale for a dollar. <laughs> Today it's worth a lot of money. Sixties, I was just finishing uh, eighth grade at Immaculate Conception Parish, and then I went into high school. Going from a Catholic school to a public school was a real challenge. We used to have the old-fashioned desk where you lift it up and you, and you get your books, and then when I went to high school, I had to learn what a, a locker was. You're used to your classmates from grammar school, but then you meet all different types of people. And it was, it was hard in the beginning, but by the time senior year, I finally got it. <laughs> I was ready to move on. I was not that great of a student, but I, I did uh, enjoy learning new things. I was five years old when I started playing the accordion, and that was not my choice of instrument. My dad put my name in a raffle for six free lessons, and there was a music studio called North Shore Music Studio, and I took for 10 years. And as the years went by, uh, I went professional when I was 15. I started playing in all the uh, restaurants in Highwood. I was pretty well known, but we had a chaperone. It would always be Mrs. Galandri there with us because they would not let underage kids in a bar. So I would be there Friday, Saturday night, playing until two in the morning. And it was a lot of fun. In those days, they would take um, like salt and put it on the floor and the people would be dancing. They did the tangos, they did the waltzes. They did all the beautiful dances in those days. And I mean, before Dancing with the Stars, these people were outstanding. And we had so much fun and I knew most of the people because it was mostly Highwood and Highland Park. People from d different towns were coming to Highwood too, but it was a very close knit community. I'm gonna cross you, wait for me. Everybody's talking at me. Only the echoes of my mind. How you doing? Which school are you guys from? Indian Trail? Oh, Edgewood, you came out early, huh? I can't Come on. see the faces. Only the shadows. Wait for me, I'll cross you. You should be walking your bike. Get off. Walk it. I'm going All right, thanks. Sun keeps shining. Safer for you. Through the pouring rain. All right, boys. You have a nice weekend. Going okay, we can go now. Suits my clothes. Have a nice weekend. All right, take care. Banking off of the northeast winds, sailing on summer breeze. Which way are your students going? All right. You're gonna cross this way here and then cross? Okay. How you doing, all right? I'm going where the sun keeps shining through the pouring rain. Are you happy you got out early? They should have saved it for next Friday so you can get off early for Memorial Day. You, you, you got a full day next Friday, you know that? That's kind of crazy, right? All right. Yeah. Take care. Oh, I tell you. And it's good money. You just twice a day, do it in the morning, do it in the evening. Sometimes you get early release. Every time you turn around, these kids have a day off. It's the best job you could ask for. You get the summer off. You get winter break, you get spring break. You don't get paid, but it's nice to have the time off. That's why I do the dogs in between. I walk the dogs, I love the dogs. 
And then my day goes by fast. I'll tell you, by nine o'clock, I'm in bed because I'm dead. Working hard, like, all day, you know. It's not like an office job like I used to do. And my, I'm moving around all day. I got a lot of action going here. It's wonderful. I like to move my body. It was, Grandpa was like that. He liked to move his body. I think I got it from Grandpa. Yeah, Dad would have been, my dad, Grandpa would have been a good school crossing guard. He would have told these kids off. You can't say nothing, though, because they'll sue you. A lot of them got, their parents are lawyers. I'm real conscious of these kids. They're like my own kids. If I had any, they would have been, you know, I watch them like they're my own. Hi, which way you go? Oh, look at that cute dachshund. Is he a mix? Oh, God, is he cute. He's got blue eyes, huh? That lady knows me. A lot of, a lot of people know me on this corner because I've been doing it. We're filming a documentary <laughs> for my 70th birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Congratulations. <laughs> huh? Is that Linda? Linda Iovino. Linda. Hi, Todd. Hi. <laughs> we used to work together at Red Seal. How are you? Oh, hi, dear. How are you? Nice to see you. Hey, how you doing? Nice to see you. Have a good summer. You too. We used to go around the block and say hello to people. Hi, how are you? Hi, hi. And nowadays these kids don't say nothing because they're taught stranger danger. You know, we, we could care less. We were lucky nobody ever grabbed us. We would have ran home anyways if they caught us, boy. But we always were in a group. We were, we never went anywhere alone. We were, Lenny in a sense, he lived on our block and we used to go around the block together. We all played together. We had baseball games in the street. All the kids would be at our house. Parents never had to worry about their kids. They were always at the Iovinos. My grandma and grandpa, mom and dad, they were the nicest people. The kids loved coming to our house. We welcome everybody. Hi, girls and boys. It was a girl, all good students. I'm gonna call you all students. How's that? Come on, let's go. That way I'm on the safe side. <laughs> Have a good one. I think the kids today get away with being on their cell phones all the time. We didn't have that option. We had uh, phones where you had to put a diamond to call somebody. My mom was afraid to use the microwave. She thought it was gonna blow up on her when the microwave came out. She was afraid to use it. In our house, if you were sitting around, they would say, what are you doing? Why, why aren't you working? <laughs> we, I, I see you kids, you're sleeping at 12 o'clock sometimes. I'm like, we would have never got away with that. I'll never forget Sunday morning, my mother would start getting us up at 6.30 to go to church. We're going to church, we're going to church. I finally joined the choir so she wouldn't be yelling at me from 6.30 on. So I was in the choir with your dad at Immaculate Conception Parish. We were in the choir there. So we had to get there early. So we were in the choir. And uh, those were nice times when I spent a lot of time with my brother, Donnie. Donnie was a year younger than I. So, um, all his friends knew that, you know, he was like my brother, so none of them wanted to date me. <laughs> they was a lot of nice looking guys, but they never dated me because they knew I was Donnie's sister. But um, they all were nice to me. So I must say, even the football players and everybody that he hung around with, they all were very nice to me. The 70s was my decade. Yeah, the 70s were the Bee Gees and uh, a lot of great music. It was uh, in the late 70s that I moved to Boulder, Colorado, and I lived there for four years. And I always remember it because I drove straight. I just stopped to get gas. And then I ended up living there for four years, and I worked at McGuckin Hardware, and their motto there was, if we don't have it, you don't need it. I worked in a real estate company, played my accordion out there for weddings up in the mountains. It was a really, really a lot of fun time. And then I realized that my family was back in Illinois and I missed them. I did make a family out in Colorado, but you know what? 
when you grow up with a family like ours, it, it was something that told me to come back. So I did go back. The 70s is a whole new situation here. <laughs> they say 70 is the new 50. It might be in my mind, but in my body, the body is just like not there. I mean, uh, I'm very blessed that I survived cancer two years ago. I'm taking it day by day. And uh, sometimes I get some headaches, but you know what? Thank God for Advil and Tylenol. But um, as far as my body, I, I, I'm so grateful I walk dogs because that moves me every day. I help the dogs and they help me. If I didn't have that, I don't think I would exercise at all, to tell you the truth. Facebook, I don't, it's too political. I don't like politics. You gotta stay away from three things. Religion, politics, and sex. Those three things get you in trouble. Don't even talk about them. I learned that a long time ago. That's the one way to stay safe because everybody's got their own you. And I listen to people, but I got my ways of the way I think and I don't like to get upset. And if I see something on TV that gets me upset, I turn it off. Because I like to be happy. When I do, I'm on LinkedIn, but I do all positive. Hi, how are you? Good. I'll, I'll walk you. I love that. How you doing? I'm good, I'm happy, happy you're here. Thanks yeah, I'm here. happy I'm here too. <laughs> yeah, have a nice weekend. Okay. That's life. That's life. I tell you, I can't deny it. I thought of quitting, baby, but my heart just ain't gonna buy it. And if I didn't think it was worth one single try, I'd jump right on a big bird and then I'd fly. Dance, too! Okay. And that's it after Linda. No, I'll take a turn. Yeah. What you doing? Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <Banana. laughs> Dad, you want to say a little bit on your 72nd birthday? I'm a survivor. Every day is a gift from God. You're right? Exactly. Without having to put it in the river. Jenna, Jenna, from over the hill. Always worked, always will. Yeah. I'm kidding. I know, I can use that. Always worked, always will. Because I was babysitting this little baby, and then I. I, 28. N, 35. How you doing, Laura? Did you say 63? Yes. Yeah. The next number to be called is 064. Happy birthday, Jenna. Happy birthday, yeah. Jenna. How old are you today? Happy two. Two, that's right. <laughs> I need more presents. That's plenty. What do you want? I like more presents for Jenna. She got enough. No, I'm going to wait all day for this cake. <laughs> what? Happy birthday. Why did you, you come me. earlier for dinner? What a beautiful day. Now we have to look on the other side and find the Greek flag. It's 
blue and white stripes, and it has a white a teacher. cross yeah. on us. Ma, you picked the Yugoslavia. That's the wrong Get one. Get the one? No. Chocolate. Look, look for it. It's, it's blue and white stripes. No, that's France. That has a five. It's a beautiful day. 50 years of marriage. Yeah. That's right. Every day beautiful. Thank God for the glory of all the people of this country. <laughs> Ma, look at the camera. This is her camera. Uh, presidential speech. And it was real good. She's running for senator. <laughs> they better not get kicked in the pants. Be quiet. <laughs> now you got him going. That's the you <laughs> And what I think should happen in America, more parties. There's not enough parties. I got nice music. I want to thank everybody for coming. No one has a banquet alone. And no one, no one has a banquet alone. You know, my dad used to always say, you can't have a banquet alone. And that's true in life. You can't have a life alone. You got to be with people. And I think the more you're with people, the better you are. And I think you live longer when you could share your ups and downs with people and, and try to be as happy as you can. When Donnie died, it was very sad for our whole family. And it's been 20 years. But you have to move forward. And I never try to think of how he died. I, tr I try to remember how he lived. I'm very happy for the turnout tonight. It's very good turnout since we invited 400 cooking to go. <laughs> now here's Al and Lenny, and Albert's asked them, yeah, I want to go and business with you, but what, what happens if it doesn't work out? <laughs> Lenny's saying, don't worry about it, you're lighting a cigar. And it rolls to the Grateful I have you in my life, Lee and Jenna and Braxton and that new little baby, Jordan, Regina, Daniela, Donna, Charlie. You know, you've all made me very happy and I hope I continue to be happy. And I want you in my life and that's why I try to text you and and stay in touch with you because I want to know what your life is all about because you know what? You guys need encouragement. Life is not easy. I remember my aunts were always there for me and my family. So I like to do that for you. And then I have my own dog business that I've been doing, and I have like 30 clients. I had more before COVID, but 30 is a nice number, and I enjoy all the dogs that I take care of. They've brought a lot of joy into my life. I did like dogs, but I never knew how sweet the Cavalier King Charles dogs were. Doggy dudes, doggy day daycare. Should have did that 20 years ago. 
Oh, you can't regret anything you do in life. There's a meaning for everything that happens. God, here's the plan. I hope I make it between Grandma died at 83, Grandpa died at 90. If I'm in between that, I'll be happy. If I die before that, when God wants me, he wants me. Your number's up. One time I was sitting down and I, by accident, I had the mic and I said, these people don't know how to drive. And a lady stopped her car and she goes, why are you yelling at the people that drive the cars? And I didn't say anything more because I didn't want to have a fight with her. But I, I, you know, I'm telling the truth. I don't make this stuff up. I wish you would sit here for a couple hours and see what goes on. They don't realize they can't get school crossing guards. We've had a couple that got hit by a car. We used to have metal stop signs. One guy got so mad, the crossing guard, he hit the car. That's why we got these corrugated cardboard ones now. And when the wind blows, look at this. What a great stop sign we got here, huh? Thank God. I. You know, mine's okay, but you gotta be careful. Boys, I'll tree, I'll crush you over here, come on. Hi, how you doing? It's windy. Look at my side. Yeah, yeah. What good is it? Thank you. Yeah, let me get you across. Look at the free sky, the free sun, the beautiful trees, the beautiful flowers, people working, having a good time, talking to each other, having their cup of coffee, walking dogs. I mean, what more, did, what more could you ask for? The stars in the sky, the moon on high, they're great for you and me because they're free. The moon belongs to everyone. The best things in life are free. The stars belong to everyone. They gleam there for you and me. The flowers in spring, the robins that sing, the sunbeams that shine, they're yours, they're mine. And love can come to everyone. The best things in life are free.